Hi everyone. So before getting into the case study, let's just do a quick little review on what dead space is. This is not a beginner video, uh, so let's go through it fast. Dead space is the volume of a breath that doesn't take part in alveolar ventilation. Quite simply, it is ventilation without perfusion. Now we got a couple of different dead spaces that we can talk about. We have the anatomical dead space, which is basically uh, your upper airway, your trach, your bronchi, down to your bronchioles. So all of those airways obviously have to be filled up with air uh, to eventually get to the alveoli where the, the gas exchange is gonna occur. So um, anatomical dead space is usually about 150 mLs um, in uh, the average person. Then also, you know, you have alveolar dead space. So you might have um, alveoli that are uh, getting vent ventilated, but there's no capillary blood flow through there. There's no perfusion. So that's called alveolar dead space. If you uh, add up the anatomical and the alveolar, you can call that the physiological dead space. And what we're going to concentrate is the mechanical dead space uh, that's caused directly by the tubes and stuff like that and the equipment that we're adding. As we know, the mechanical dead space starts at the Y and typically, you know, it's that 50 cc corrugated tubing, the HME, that's part of the mechanical dead space. If you have extra connectors and uh, adapters, let's say uh, end tidal CO2. So basically, this is, again, an artificial, in a way, extension of your trachea. So let's begin the case study. What we have here is a 74-year-old male that is a post-cardiac arrest. His ideal body weight after measuring the patient is 55 kilograms. The patient was intubated on the floor during the cardiac arrest, was resuscitated and transferred to the ICU. The parameters that the patient was on was ACPC with a pressure control setting of 32. And that is a peak inspiratory pressure on that ventilator. So the actual delta P is 22. The respiratory rate was set at 34 breaths per minute, a TI of 0.65, the PEEP was 10. The patient's tidal volume based on their ideal body weight was 7.5 mLs per kilogram with an average tidal volume of 400. With these parameters, the total minute ventilation for the patient was 13 liters per minute. With 13 liters per minute, we had a pH of 7.21, a CO2 of 39, a PVO2 of 54, and our base excess was minus 11 with a bicarb of 15. The patient was already on a bicarb infusion for his metabolic acidosis, and as an RT, we were trying to uh, hyperventilate to compensate. The previous blood gas was like even worse. It was like 7.05. So if we remember the parameters that we're on, we have a PC setting of 32, guys. We have a drive pressure that's well above 15 at 22. So we are not uh, in any position to make further uh, adjustments to increase any of the power of the vent to try and help this uh, blood gas along, to try and correct it. Um, that was not an option. And I was going to suggest to the doctor uh, more along the lines of permissive hypercapnia uh, to allow a lower pH so that we're not being too aggressive trying to ventilate the lung to get a better blood gas. Uh, we have to remember not to ventilate the blood gas, ventilate your patient. And sometimes allowing a worse blood gas is more gentle on the lung. And that's good in the long term, right? So entering the room and doing my first round, I did notice that there was a mechanical dead space within the circuit. We had the 50 cc corrugated tubing as well as the HME, adding up to 80 cc's of mechanical dead space. Don't forget guys that the respiratory rate that's set on this uh, patient is 34 breaths per minute. Therefore, let's do the math. 34 breaths and we're losing 80 cc's for every breath because of this mechanical dead space tubing. Therefore, by removing the ADCC dead space ventilation with that set rate of 34, we are increasing the alveolar ventilation by 2.7 liters. 
We haven't needed to adjust any of the parameters. We're not being more aggressive with the lung. And we've just gained 2.7 liters merely by removing tubing. Another way to look at it is, <clears throat> sorry, you basically, just by removing the tubing, increased your respiratory rate by uh, seven, basically, 6.8 is the math, but you've basically done no changes on your vent parameter, but as far as the benefits is, you've increased uh, alveolar ventilation by 2.7 liters, which is kind of equivalent to increasing your set rate by seven. I also uh, did this math here uh, at the bedside. I used the uh, equation that if you have the known CO2, you can multiply that by the known minute ventilation, put that over the desired CO2, and that'll give you a set minute ventilation. Um, but you can use the X anywhere. So I knew that the uh, CO2 was 39 and that the minute ventilation previously was 13 liters per minute. I also realized that by uh, removing that 2.7 liters of uh, mechanical dead space that was being stolen, in a way, I basically increased the new minute ventilation to 15.3. The um, math, I swapped it all around and uh, came with an estimated CO2 of 33. So basically, removed the, the dead space ventilation, did the math, came up to 7.2 um, uh, minute ventilation gained one and since I knew it was 13 previously I just made uh, you know I just added the 2.7 liters as if I had made changes because basically that's what I did without touching the parameters and um, what I was expecting uh, with that removal of the dead space was for the estimated CO2 to be 33. All right, so just a quick reminder, this was the blood gas before taking the alveolar, um, taking out, sorry, the mechanical dead space and doing the calculations. I estimated with just the removal of the mechanical dead space, assuming that the condition of the lung uh, between this blood gas and the next one remained stable and that there was no significant uh, change um, in the mechanics of the lung, the CO2 should be 33. It should be quite close. The equation works very well. So when we got the blood gas back, um, the CO2 was exactly 33. It's at that point that I realized that I really should have made a bet with the nurse because I would have won a coffee. Oh well, next time. All right, guys, so in closing, just realize that the smaller your patient uh, is when you measure them, obviously the tidal volume is going to be smaller. So a big guy that has 700 cc's or 600, uh, that 80 cc dead space not going to be maybe as um, critical. However, when you, you're getting the smaller uh, population, you know, the smaller uh, height, like five foot or under five feet, that 80 cc is going to start taking a large percentage of your set tidal volume. So I hope that you guys enjoyed my video. If you do like the content, please subscribe to this channel. Please go see the playlist. I have uh, tons of videos and lectures from Drager and whatnot. Um, this site is good for residents that kind of want to get uh, knowledgeable about respiratory therapy, mechanical ventilation, and, and whatnot. Thanks a lot again for encouraging me, guys, and uh, pass this YouTube channel around. All right, see ya.